So hi everyone, this is Umak and welcome to all of your channel. So here I am with a new content. So in this video, we will discuss how to fabricate a perovskite based solar cell in lab. So basically you know, the area of perovskite is very huge nowadays. People are working on the lead based perovskite as a lead free perovskite. It may be halide perovskite or oxide, or oxide based perovskite. So knowing the fabrication of solar cell in lab scale is very much important. So that's why I am planning to have a video on it. So this video is going to be very short within 3 to 4 slides I will try to explain all the things because if you will be very long then you will may get uh, bored in this area because you all are in the uh, in your masters and your BSc. So let's have a short discussion on the fabrication process. So before going to the fabrication process we should know why need of the solar cell uh, based of the perovskite material. So basically you know the in order to deal with the energy crisis we need a solar cell which is basically a photovoltaic device which will convert the solar energy into the electrical energy but uh, if you see in the traditionally basically people are using the silicon based solar cell because silicon is so stable in room temperature in ambient also so you can operate this solar cell in day to day life. So still we are using the silicon based solar cell the efficiency has been reached like uh, 17 to uh, 18 percent uh, in silicon based solar cell but the problem in silicon based solar cell is like silicon is very costly okay the cost of silicon is so high so this is the main problem associated with the silicon because the uh, preparation of silicon in single crystal is very challenging as you know it is need a high industrial cost and fabrication cost is so much so that is the main problem associated with the silicon based solar cell so apart from the silicon based solar cell people are also fabricating thin film based solar cell like UP, UPC then cadmium sulphide and acidity cadmium telluride these are the few few material which are also good in as a solar observer layer you have a good solar cell but this efficiency is uh, nearly 8 to 9 percent the solar cell based upon this thin film uh, I think 8 to 9 percent till the date okay so in order to deal with this situation the resource is going on like have a high efficiency solar cell so for this purpose people are going towards perovskite based solar cell okay so this is the main cause why people are going for the perovskite based solar cell so what is perovskite because perovskite is nothing but a absorber layer it's not a solar cell it's absorber layer which act between p and n side okay so light will be absorbed in this layer so electron hole pair will be generated there so now electron will move to other inside and p will move hole will move side to uh, p side that is the charge transfer of course at the trans uh, at the interface and you will collect this electrons in the respective electrodes and it will move in the circuit you will get the power or electricity so this is the basic fundamental of the perovskite so what is the perovskite is not very important to know so basically perovskite is a structure having the uh, formula like a b x 3 okay this is this is a single perovskite a b x 3 is a single perovskite where A is where A is a valency uh, monovalent cation valence one cation okay and B is plus two valency cation and X is halide X is halide so nowadays people also working on the ABO3 material ABO3 this is a oxide based material so please keep in mind that uh, perovskite may be halide based perovskite that is ABX3 where X can be fluorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine. Okay, so these are the halides. So this perovskite is based is known as the halide based perovskite. But if we take uh, oxygen in place of X, this will be a uh, oxide based perovskite. Okay, the structure is the same, ABX3 and ABO3. So first perovskite that was discovered was calcium titanate, Ca, Ci, O3. This is a very big area of research nowadays, perovskite based research. Okay, so you should keep some fundamental in your mind. Uh, in the upcoming days i will uh, cover all of uh, the concepts regarding perovskite but in this video i will just give you insight how people are fabricating the solar cell based upon the perovskite material in lab so this is the structure if you see the unit cell of this perovskite uh, this a side is uh, sitting in the corner of the unit cell this is a, a side and here this is a side okay and b side is uh, placing is um, placed in the middle of the unit cell this is the b side okay and your x side this is halide or oxygen side is sitting here okay so this is the arrangement of a, a cation b cation and x anion in a unit cell okay so this is a octahedral so this is a purely octahedral formed by b cation so it is important that octahedral is formed by contributed by b halide okay so it is known as metal halide okay 
so metal halide octa octahedral so perovskite is nothing but alternative arrangement of the metal halide octahedral if you see this image if you see this image this is a metal halide octahedral contributed by b atom this is a metal halide octahedral contributed by b atom with halide atom so if we arrange this in a three dimensional structure you will get that a atom will be sitting in the void of the octahedral okay so if i think you are getting heart as a perovskite structure is this is a 3d perovskite this is a single 3d perovskite having a structure a b x 3 or a b o 3 okay so what is special about this perovskite so why this perovskite is important as a solar observer lab because if you see, if you see the function of a solar cell depend upon how much light that is how much photon it is absorbing so this perovskite is a good observer it is a good observer within 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer that is the so visible spectrum of the solar cell energy or the visible spectra of the solar radiation electromagnetic radiation is greatly absorbed by this material so this material is a good observer okay secondly this material have a good emission also also with that the electron diffusion length diffusion length of the electron in the interface of the difference is a very high the electron immediately can move to the end side in after get created at the exciton form okay after absorbing the photon energy so diffusion path length is high also mobility is also high mobility of the electron is high so coefficient absorbance is high diffusion path length is high that is diffusion coefficient is high also mobility of the electron is high so these are the few fundamental parameter that is good in this material that's why this material is important as a solar observer so on depending upon that uh, properties people are using this material as a solar observer layer okay so here is the basic structure of a perovskite based solar cell so this is a schematic diagram of a perovskite based solar cell how it is formed basically in lab people what happen people are taking a substrate what is a substrate on which film is deposited which is known as substrate people are taking fto or ito what is fto what is ito FTO is fluorine doped tin oxide and I2 is indium doped tin oxide. Basically, this is the glass, but in this glass, one surface is coated with fluorine doped and the other is I it indium doped. What happens by doping this fluorine and indium? This substrate, substrate of this glass become surface of the glass become conducting. That means you are making the conducting surface on a glass, which is basically insulator. Okay. So you are making an insulator surface conducting. That is a special type of glass which is known as FTO or ITO. Okay. Once you have this FTO or ITO you have to grow your electron transport layer here this is the electron transport layer because electron will get move in this layer this is etl etl this etl basically n type material okay this etl is a n type material you can take fno2 that is tin oxide or you can take zinc oxide okay the, you can take tio2 these are the basic metal oxide which are available are good also these are very good material for the n type material or the etl for the solar cell okay so for this purpose you can take sno2 tio2 or zinc oxide okay these are the metal oxide which can be used as a etl layer after depositing this etl layer basically people can deposit this etl layer in spin coating techniques or spot string there are various techniques you can use to deposit this etl material on the fto substrate after depositing this etl you can deposit your perovskite layer here you can deposit your perovskite material in this uh, above, above this ETL layer. How you can deposit this uh, perovskite layer? Basically, people are using, uh, depending on the material, you are using the lead based perovskite or lead free perovskite. What is your material? I will discuss about this uh, lead free and lead based material because these two areas are the different big area of the perovskite uh, family. Okay. So, you may work in the lead free material, you can have the uh, your research in the lead, free, lead based material. So depending upon the material and its property, you can use a technique like spin coating, spray coating, deep coating, or you can evaporate your material by thermal evaporation. So various techniques are there through which you can deposit your ETL layer. So basically this is your, sorry, perovskite layer. This is your perovskite layer, okay. This is your perovskite layer, and this is your ETL layer, and this is your FTO, okay. So after depositing this ETL, it's not easy. So I am just describing, but the parameter like thickness, surface softness, adhesion between two layers, contact are very much crucial for the device application that is for the solar cell. It's not an easy to fabricate a solar cell lab. Okay. So after depositing this perovskite layer, you have to deposit your STL that is whole transport layer. 
this is basically a p type material okay for this stl people are using pama okay so people are using this pama as a p type material or spiro also spiro spiro is a, or these are the organic uh, material or organic molecule which are good for the whole uh, collection or whole transport in this layer so after depositing this stl by various method like a thin coating or deep coating or etc you can use you have to give a metal contact to collect the charges okay you have to give a metal contact so this metal contact this is a metal contact okay this is a metal contact this metal contact can be deposited by thermal evaporation techniques or people are using also silver paste for this contact so you have to give another contact here over the fto you have contact on the fto one contact over the stl now you have to connect this two terminal okay and you have to incident your light on the p side i will explain in the further video why light is incident on the p side of a solar system light will fall in the p side then your perovskite layer will absorb the material because the thickness of stl should be small and in stl which is a p type material electron in the minority charge carrier so it can easily move through the depletion region okay so electron will absorb in the perovskite material so here electron and hole will be generated electron will move move to the n type material that is electron transport layer and hole will move to the stl that is hole transport layer which is a p type material now electron will be move in this circuit and you will get the power but the thing is not easy everything that is band alignment band gap of the material how interface is formed how roughness is uh, small in the surface of the substrate uh, material everything will play an important role for the uh, transport of the charges in the circuit it will directly affect the efficiency along with that the grains that is morphology of the material is very much important because morphology will <laughs> important in order to have a good mobility of the material so everything is the critical parameter for the device as well as steel fabrication so keeping everything in mind people are working in this area and fabricating different kind of solar cell so after that here i am showing a schematic diagram of a fabricated solar cell here you can see how the final device is looking like this is the metal electrode given okay so five metal electrode here five metal electrode here so it will act like a five device okay because you need just a one contact on the stl and one contact on the fto this will give you one device okay so if you are you because you are working on the micro scale so or macro scale also so people are using various number of device in a single substrate so this is a schematic diagram of a fabricated solar cell so here is the schematic diagram of a cross sectional of a uh, solar cell this is cross sectional scm image scanning electron microscope if you can see then this is the stl layer this is the sno2 layer and here is the mapb i3 which is a famously used in layer based material perovskite ma pb i3 which is a methyl ammonium lead iodide which is a best solar absorber layer but the problem is associated with lead instability issues there that's why people are going for the lead thin perovskite material after this MAPB I3, you can see a spiro is deposited here. Spiro is a P-type STL material is deposited here. So this is the confirmation from the cross-sectional SCM that your material is deposited one over one over other. Okay. So this is the final efficiency measurement that is IB characteristic or you can say JB characteristic is measured with different uh, radiation uh, intensity and uh, the efficiency is calculated with the formula from the field factor also. So this is a basic band diagram alignment of this uh, perovskite where uh, you can say this is ITO band, this is pyro band, this is the perovskite band, this is the EPL band and here is the metal electrode band. So because you, if you see the fundamental physics of the interface, the band alignment is purely depend upon the work function of the material, electron affinity of the material. So depending all the parameters, band alignment will be there. Depending upon the band alignment, charge transport will be get affected. So every parameter is going to affect your, affect your performance of the device. So keeping everything in your mind, you have to work in this area because this area is very huge and very challenging as well as very interesting. Okay. So thank you so much for uh, watching my video. So this is all about the fundamental how people are working on the basic perovskite based solar cell. Not only perovskite based solar cell, in any metal based perovskite, you have to follow this process to have a solar cell in your hand. Thank you so much. I think this type of video will be uploaded in the in this channel so that you can open your mind to uh, gain knowledge how people are working in this area and how experimental physics is going on in India also. So thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you for support. Keep uh, stay tuned my channel. Thank you.